Hey everybody, welcome to lesson 10. This is a 251 in the style of George Benson. In uh, today's lesson, we're going to talk about how George might approach playing over a 251 in the key of C. Um, it's not a note for note solo, but I do recall um, getting this insight while transcribing his solo to Stella by Starlight on the Tenderly album. And uh, again, I'm trying to offer you some insight into playing jazz uh, without using the traditional chord scale approach and that's just because I find that to be uh, a pretty one-dimensional approach. Uh, in this case uh, I'll show you the phrase I'll speculate as to what I think George is probably thinking about when he's playing um, this riff or playing over this this chord progression um, I do, at the end of the lesson, get into a little bit of theory, um, and I do mention, and I'd like to mention again now, that the most important part of this lesson is learning how to play this phrase uh, in time, make it swing in, um, and, and play it from memory. Um, that's really where you're going to gain um, from this lesson. That's really where you're going to... to um, increase your ability to speak the language of jazz is to take this idea and put it in time when you're playing a tune right have it at your disposal so that when you're playing Stella or you're playing some other standard where you have a 251 you can put this phrase in time and uh, make it sound convincing and play it play it with conviction so uh, without further ado let's head to lesson 10 251 in the style of George Benson all right Okay, here we are, lesson 10, 251 in the style of George Benson. And uh, what we're going to do is play a 251 in the key of C. And um, I'll play it a, a handful of times and then walk you through it. And then, um, you know, talk a little bit about how George may, may think about um, his approach or how, how he might he might um, describe his approach to playing this 251. So let me turn up the volume on the old flashback pedal. I've got a 251 looping. I'll play the phrase and then we'll talk about it. So here we are. This would be two, two, five, one, like that. And here's the phrase. So uh, let me walk you through it, give you the fingering, and then, then we'll talk a little bit about it. So uh, the phrase starts on the fourth string with my index finger, second fret, and I'm going to hammer on to the third fret, then move up to the third string, second fret, third string, fifth fret with my third finger, and make a mini bar to go up to the second string. Same string, second string, but down now to the third fret then uh, I'm going to surround the B natural note which is the fourth fret on the third string and this is a very typical George move or bebop move I'd say and that is uh, I'm going to begin by playing third string fifth fret then third string second fret third fret fourth fret so I surrounded B natural right it's like a Charlie Christian riff, right? So, so far we have, okay? And then I'm gonna make a mini bar, once I hit that B natural there, um, that's third string, fourth fret, I'm gonna make a mini bar and play fourth fret, second string. Then up to the first string where I play the third fret, sixth fret, third fret, mini bar again, so second string, fourth fret, third string, fourth fret, uh, my 
ring finger hits fourth string fifth fret and then at the point where the C major chord resolves I'm gonna play um, I guess kind of a West phrase but I'm gonna play the second string third fret um, third string fourth fret and then fourth string fifth fret so it's like a G major triad so again in slow motion the whole riff goes right it's kind of a triplet figure and triplet Okay, so again, I can't claim to speak for George, but what I can say is that I had the uh, opportunity to study with one of George's students. So I do have some insight um, in how he puts the stuff together. And of course, I've spent a fair amount of time transcribing a bunch of his music. So um, I can tell you that uh, George doesn't really think about scales at all, and what he, what he thinks about is his chords. So um, on the D minor chord, uh, George is actually going to play an F major seven arpeggio. Okay, again, like you know, he's thinking primarily of chords. So we have this F major seven sound beginning on E natural, right? That's an F major seven arpeggio, and then um, this phrase that surrounds B natural he's hitting that in time for the chord to ch change to G7 okay so we so he's thinking F major 7 resolving here but this this shape right here really is the, what we call the tritone substitution. So I, I suspect, again, I don't know for certain, but I suspect that George is is uh, thinking about either D flat seven, or D flat thirteen, or it's possible. Um, that he could be thinking F major and then this um, this type of sound actually this note to me makes me think that he's he's thinking about D flat uh, 13 and this would be the sharp 11 um, anyway if if these notes are confusing it doesn't really matter the truth is just learning how to play it in time and getting the sound in your ears. Um, I was going to suggest that he was playing an F sharp, I'm sorry, an F minor seven flat five. So, which, which could have been one of his ideas. Um, but again, in this case, that seems more like a, uh, D flat 13 sharp 11. So we have F major 7, D flat 13 sharp 11. Okay, and then this resolution note here is the 9, major 7, and 5 of C major. Right? Some nice color tones. Right? Again, I suggest that you take that idea and you know apply that idea to two five ones all over the guitar neck, right? You could play, you could take this notion that we can play a major seven arpeggio that's up a minor third from the two chord. In this case, it was F major seven. Right? Outline a tritone sub, right? Or a dominant chord down a half step from the two chord 
and then resolve it down another half step to the one chord. Okay. Again, if you have any questions about this lesson or any of the other lessons that I'm posting here, I, please feel free to send me an email. You can uh, get my contact information at belltowertrio.com. Just go to the contact page and then send me an email. So I'd, I'd appreciate hearing from you, and I'm happy to consider any suggestions you might have for future lessons. Okay, thanks, and good luck.